Okay, we're gonna go through is I'm gonna go through several examples on how to find limits algebraically. Okay, and there are three major strategies. Actually, you could probably say four major strategies on how to find limits algebraically. Um, the first one is the easiest and one that you always want to look at first. Um, the first strategy is what's called direct substitution. Substitution. All right. Now, with direct substitution. It is what it says it is. Um, the key thing you're going to look for is as you do a limit, you see your function. And you want to try to figure out where is this value approaching. So you're trying to find an output as x gets closer and closer to negative 3. If you notice that the function, all right, the function you have here is continuous. Now, what does continuous mean? Continuous means there are no holes, no gaps, no vertical asymptotes, all right, for this function, all right? So there's a straight, all right, a line with no, no holes or nothing. All right, if that's continuous, then we know this fact. The limit as x approaches c for the function is going to equal f of c. Okay, that is going to be the truth. So the limit actually equals a function if only, all right, if the function is continuous. If f of x is continuous, all right, then this has to be the case and the converse is also true. Okay, so find this by using our substitution, well, this is the parabola. Parabola is always continuous. It's a polynomial. Therefore, um, as you approach negative 3 to the right or left side, it will approach the same value. So to find that value, what the limit is, is you simply just plug it in, directly substitute it in. When you do that, okay, um, you get a value. And so we can do this to, this could be 9, um, negative 12 plus 1. We have 18 minus 12 plus 1. Um, that's going to be 19. 19 minus 12 is going to give us 7. 7 is our limit, and that's our answer. Easy, right? Yeah, simple. All right. Next one. Let's say we have a limit. We have a little trig here. Arc sine, arc sine of 1 half. The arc sine graph, okay, um, as you get closer and closer to this, um, we are going to pi over 2, and then over here we're going to negative pi over 2, and what you have right here is it's going to have a little horizontal asymptotes like that. And you're going to have a graph that goes like this. Okay? That's what the arc sine graph looks like. Once again, the arc sine graph is continuous. All right? This is continuous. All right? That means the limit as x approaches 1 half of arc sine of x is going to equal arc sine of 1 half. Okay? Well, if you're wondering what arc sine of one half is, well, sine or one half, um, one has to be the opposite side. Two is the thing because this is our ratio. We're looking for an angle. What angle has one and radical or one and two? That's going to be 30 degrees, which actually equals pi over six. All right, pi over six. So pi over six is going to be our value. So if I plug in pi over sine and pi over six, we get one half, and that's where it's approaching. All right. So the first strategy and the easiest one that you always want to try, all right, when you're solving limits, is what's called direct substitution. Um, generally speaking, if you plug a value into the function and you get a value out, it normally is continuous. Um, that works most of most of the time, um, but that uh, that is what you want to try first. I'll show you some other strategies in the next tutorials.